What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to dive into Flask for web development. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to learn Flask. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, it is Friday here in Vegas, and I am starting a new segment called Flask Friday. That's right, Flask Friday, because Flask is incredibly fun, and Friday should always be fun. So from now on, on Fridays, we're going to do Flask. And we're really going to dive into this and learn it from the beginning to the end. We're going to get all the way into it. This is going to be a comprehensive and complete playlist, and it should be a lot of fun. So we're going to start out building a blog, and we're going to call it Flasker, sort of like blogger, but Flasker. And uh, that's what we're going to start out with. So in this video, we're going to talk about Flask a little bit. We're going to uh, install it, get it started, build a simple web page with it. You know, nothing too complicated in this first video, but we will have something actually finished by the end of this video and it should be really cool. Now, a lot of you may ask why Flask and not Django. I have a lot of Django videos and we're going to continue to learn Django in this uh, channel, but Flask is a little bit different than Django. So Django is sort of a complete web framework. Flask is more of a lightweight framework, right? And there are benefits and drawbacks for both of them, right? So Django is great for huge projects. It's very complete. It has everything you could ever want. Flask has less, let's just call them things for now, but gives you more control because it's a smaller, lighter weight framework. You can really get in there and do exactly what you want. And you can pull in third party things, uh, utilities and things to make it more robust, more Django like if you want, but you don't have to. So that's the beauty of Flask. It's great for very simple projects. It's great for large projects. It's just depends on you as a developer and what you like most. So let's head over to the website really quickly. And I just went to Google and typed in Python Flask. And the first or second thing that popped up is the Flask website. You can see it's flask.palettesprojects.com. It's kind of a weird name, but you can dig through here. There's a user's guide. There's some uh, lots of documentation and all kinds of things. If you really want to, you know, kind of read about all this stuff, you can do that there. We're not going to bother with that in this video. We're just going to dive right in and get started. So as in all of my courses here, I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal. And you can find those at sublimetext.com and git-scm.com forward slash download, I believe. This is the Git Bash terminal. It's completely free, so it's sublime. So those are the tools I'm going to be using. So let's just jump right in and pull up our Git Bash terminal. So I just opened this, and if I take PWD, I can see I'm in the C users Codemy directory. Now, Codemy is the name of my logged in Windows username, so that's what's coming up there. Yours will say something different, obviously. But the first thing I want to do is make a directory to hold our new Flask project and all of our Flask projects. So I'm going to type MKDIR, stands for make directory, and I want to put this in the C drive and let's call this Flasker. Now, if you're on a Mac, obviously you don't have a C drive, just stick it anywhere you want and that will be fine. So now we need to change into that directory, CD, change directory, and let's go C Flasker. And you can see right here, now we're in that Flasker directory. If I type in LS, there's nothing there. So the first thing we always want to do with any sort of Python project is create a virtual environment. So to do that, we go Python dash M V E N V. And now we just name our virtual environment. And I'm going to call this vert short for virtual. And it usually takes a second, it sort of spins up and uh, installs this thing. Now Vin V E N V comes with Python. So you should be good to go. All right. So now we can activate our virtual environment by typing in source and then vert which is that directory we just created right there and then scripts and then activate. So source vert scripts activate. If you're on a Mac, I believe it's source bin activate or source vert bin activate, something like that. You can play around with that. Google it if you have to for a Mac, but I think that's what it is. So, okay, we can clear the screen now and you see we have this vert thing above our command prompt. I hit enter a bunch of times, it's always there. So we can turn it off by typing deactivate if we want to. And you can notice now that vert thing is gone, right? So I'm gonna turn it back on again, source vert scripts activate. Okay, so our virtual environment is turned on. Now, if we type in pip freeze, this will show us all the Python things that are installed in our new virtual environment. And you can see nothing is installed at all because we haven't installed anything. So the first thing we need to do is install Flask. So we just go pip install Flask. Now, if you get an error while doing this saying that pip doesn't have permission or something, it means you didn't install Python correctly, reinstall Python, 
And in the first installation screen, there's a box at the bottom that says add Python to path. Make sure that's checked. Restart your terminal, try it again, and it should work. So, all right, you can see it downloaded and installed a bunch of stuff. So we clear the screen. And now if we type in pip freeze, we can see we've got all this stuff that's been installed. Click Flask, it's dangerous. Jinja 2, a markup safe, and Verkzug. So these are all the things that we need for Flask that come with Flask, all the dependencies and all that good stuff. And we're ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do, we're in our C Flasker directory. If we type ls, we see there's this vert directory, that's our virtual environment stuff. Uh, we're not gonna really do anything with that, but just notice that it's there. So now let's create a file that we can start doing flasky stuff with. So I'm just gonna type touch, and then let's call this hello.py. You don't have to do it this way, but touch creates files. So now if we type in ls, we could see this hello.py file that's been created, there's nothing in it, and that's cool. So let's head over to our Sublime Text Editor and open this up, and I'm going to go to Project and Add Folder, there it is, Add Folder to Project. That oh, popped up over here. And now just navigate to that file, we, or to that directory we just created. So that was Flasker, so I'm in my C drive here, you can see. You may have to navigate around to find your C drive, but uh, go ahead and find that. And here's our Flasker directory, so I double click that, and we can select this folder. So boom, we do this, this pops up. Here's our virtual stuff, we could just ignore that. Uh, and then here's this hello pi, hello.py file. So if we click it and open it, there is absolutely nothing in here. So to start a Flask file, a Flask project of any kind, we need to import Flask into our little project here. So to do that, we go from Flask, import Flask, and that is capital F. And that's all we need to do. Now we're also gonna need something else in a bit. So I'll just go ahead and import it now too. And that is render underscore template. And we'll see what that is in just a minute. So, okay, now let's create a Flask instance. So to start using this, we need to create a, a, an instance of Flask that will be running that does all the things, right? And to do that, we just call app equals, and then Flask, capital F, and now underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore, right? So you see two underscores, no spaces in there, and what this does is this helps Flask find all of our files in our directory here. Doesn't really matter how, but this is how you always start a Flask project. So app equals Flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore. So, okay, that's cool. So we've got this app instance here we can call on in the future and do stuff with. So what we wanna do now is create a route. So let's create a route. It's actually called a decorator, decorator. I don't like to get bogged down in names of things and you don't really need to know that that's a decorator or why, that's just what it's called. So basically we're creating a route. Anytime you have a website, it needs URLs. So www.yourwebsite.com slash index.html. That index.html, that's a route. We need to create that. www.yourwebsite.com slash about.html. That about.html, that's a route. Anytime you have a web page, it needs a URL, and we need to create those by creating routes. So to do that, it's really simple. We just call at, and then app, which is just our app right there, our app instance. So app, at app dot route. And then inside of here, we just create the route that we want. So we need an index route, the very first page of our website. So when we go to www.ourwebsite.com forward slash nothing, that's sort of the, the homepage of the website. If we wanted this to point to about.html, we would do something like that, or even just about, whatever. But for now, we just want the root route, which is the main web page, and that creates that. So now we need to define this thing, so define index, and now we can just return whatever we want. So we're gonna get more complicated in the future, but for now, let's just say we wanna return the words hello world, and let's, be fancy, let's put this in an H1 tag. This is an HTML H1 tag. If you're not familiar with HTML, uh, we have an opening tag here and a closing tag here. H1 stands for header one or heading one. It just makes the text really big. You can have H2, which makes it a little smaller, H3, H4, H5, H6, H6, and it keeps getting smaller and smaller. So that's all there is to that. So. I think that's pretty much it. This will create a simple website with one page that says hello world on it. Now, obviously this is not 
what we want. We want more complicated things. We want to be able to call actual web pages like about.html has entire web pages on them. We don't just want one line of text here on a web page, but just to get started, this will work. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our terminal. Now, in order to run this thing, usually you just have to type in flask run. But before we do that, we need to do a couple other things that will work and that will run our web server. But in order for our website to appear in a web browser, the server has to run and the server will be running inside of this terminal. And anytime we make a change to our code, say back here, if we just do flask run and the server's running, we need to, we will have to turn off the server and then restart it again for those changes to take effect. And that's really annoying because we're going to be making changes all the time. We don't have, we don't want to have to restart the server every time we do that. So to get around that, we can set in a couple environmental variables and let's just go ahead and do that now. So we type export and then flask underscore ENV stands for environment, environmental variable. And this is our development, development environment. Whenever you're building stuff on your computer, that's the development environment. You're developing your website. When you push it up online, that becomes the production environment, the production website. We'll do that much later. Right now, while we're building this thing, we're going to be building it locally just on our computer until we're ready to push it online, which we will eventually. But when we're first starting out, when we're just building it. We're just going to be working in the development environment. So we set that. And then we also type in export flask underscore app and set that equal to something. Now, if we head back over here, we name this file hello.py. So we need to tell the server basically, hey, our app is sitting at hello.py, right? Nope, typo. So no spaces. Boom, there we go. All right. So that looks good. Now we can Flask run. And this will run the little sort of baby web server that comes with Flask. And you can see it's created a little URL, which we can copy. And this is 127.0.0.1. That is computer for local hosts. So you can go to that colon 5000. This 5000 is the port that this thing is running on, port 5000. So the server is listening for port 5000. The web browser will send the web page to port 5000 and everything syncs up. So we could go to this thing or we can go to local host. We'll do both and see what that does. So we can come over here and paste this in here. And you can see, boom, hello world. So Notice it's 127.0.0.1. Like I said, we could also just type in local host colon 5000. Same thing. I usually just use local host because it's easier to type than 127.0.0.1, but uh, they're the exact same thing. And you see, we, it says hello world and very, very cool and very, very easy. So this is our first web page with Flask. Congratulations. Fantastic. It's amazing. It's an amazing web page, right? But it's, it's, you know, it was quick and easy. And you can see just how cool this is. So like I said, in the future, we're going to push this to live online. But for now, we're just going to be dealing with this locally. So we're going to use local host. And that's cool. So what else can we play around with this? We can change this around. Let's head back over here and let's create another one of these. I'm just going to copy and paste. And instead of index, let's call this user and let's create another route. So app dot route and then our parentheses and quotation marks. You notice these are single quotation marks. You could also use double quotation marks. It really doesn't matter. So I'll just use single. Now for this one, let's let's go forward slash user forward slash and let's put these little brackets and inside of here, let's put name, right? So this will allow us to pass a name. So this will look like, uh, you know, local host colon 5000 forward slash user forward slash John. So we're going to create a blog. It's going to have users. You know, we might want to designate a user's profile page by calling it their name. So this will allow us to do that sort of dynamically, right? So that's kind of cool. Now inside of here, we can copy this in our user page itself. We can pass in that name. Now we can use that name, whatever it is, inside of here. So instead of hello world, I could type in hello and then squiggly brackets. And then we could type at the end of this dot format and then pass in that name. So this will say hello, hopefully name, which if we go to this page, let me just copy this should be John or let's go capital J because you know, my name is capital. 
I don't know. It's Friday. It's Flask Friday. So, okay, let's copy this. Let's save this. Let's head back over to our website, paste this guy in, user John. Now it says, hello, John. Very cool. If we change this to uh, Pete, hello, Pete. Change this to April. Hello, April. Very, very cool. And that doesn't seem nearly as exciting. We need some ex exclamation points. So let's go boom, 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 maybe three, I think three. <laughs> So we hit reload, boom, hello, April. And you'll notice we made some changes to our code right here. We did not have to come back to our web server and break out of it, restart it, because we set these environmental things earlier. So it's sort of listening for changes and it figures out we've made changes and then it, see it reloads on its own. And that's very, very cool. So, all right, we are moving right along. One more thing I wanna look at very quickly before we get out of here. We just did a very basic one line thing, right? Which is generally not what you wanna do. You wanna create entire pages and those pages are gonna have lots of code, lots of HTML, CSS, all the things. We're not just gonna have one line. So how do we do that? We're, we don't wanna write all like pages and pages of HTML code between these quotation marks. That would be crazy. Instead, we can create templates. So to do that, I'm gonna head up to my Flasker directory, right click and click new folder. And you can see down here, we can name it. I'm gonna name it templates. You can see, boom, it popped right up. Oh, it did not, where did it go? Now we come over here to project and refresh. Okay, there it is. For some reason it didn't pop right up. Uh, like I said, I just go to project and refresh folders and boom, there it is. Now I can right click on here and create a new file. And when I do, it pops up here. I can go to file, save as, and let's save this as index.html. Now inside of here, let's go h1, and let's go hello world, close that. Then down here, let's go just a p tag. This is my first web page. Or yeah, web page is fine. And it's very exciting. And we can close this. And all right, that's fine for now. Let's go ahead and save this as index.html. Now we can come back over here and instead of this, which I'm just gonna copy this, and I'm gonna comment this out just so it's still here. And I may not have mentioned it, but the code for all of this stuff will be available on my GitHub page. I'll put a link in the description below in the comment section. The first pinned comment will always have a link to the code that you can look this up. So I'll leave this in here just so you have it as an example, but I'm gonna repaste this in. And now we can use this, remember this render template thing we added, we imported at the beginning, we can actually, instead of just rendering HTML like we did here, we can render a template. That's what render template is, right? So instead of return and then just some HTML, we can get rid of all of this and we can return render underscore template and then just pass in the template we wanna render. So this is index.html. So how does Flask know where this is? because we put it in this tip in this templates directory and Flask knows that our templates go in the templates directory. So it's looking there for it. And we can come up here and refresh folders again. For some reason, this isn't auto refreshing. Maybe it's time to restart my computer or something, but it should just pop up automatically. And you can see there it is. If we close this, that looks good. So now if we save this, head back over to the website and go back to our index, our root route, you notice, boom, hello world, this is my first web page, and it's redirecting to that index.html page. If we right click and view the page source, we can see, yep, sure enough, there's that code we just typed in that other page, which is, let's see, right there, right there, do it again, isn't this cool, all right? Save this, come back over here, hit reload, boom, pops right up, and that's very, very cool. Uh, now this other thing still works. We can go user Tim, it still says hello Tim, that still works fine. But when we go to our index route, it will go to the index.html page from now on, and that's cool. So that's intro to Flask. Like I said, in this playlist, every Friday we're gonna be diving very deep into Flask. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty. We're gonna learn how to do stuff, why to do stuff. We're gonna learn all about uh, all the different things in great detail, and we're gonna do that to begin with by building out a blog with Flask. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And in the next video, we'll dive in and really start building this thing out and getting uh, 
some actual tangible stuff instead of these basic little nothing web pages. In this video, I just wanted to sort of whet your appetite and, and get started. Now, last year I did another Flask playlist and I was like, I don't know, 10 or 12 videos, something like that. It wasn't very long. It just went over very basic stuff. We're gonna fly through that very quickly in the next couple of videos. But if you don't wanna wait a whole week, you can go back and check out that Flask playlist. The link is in the channel somewhere in the playlist section. Uh, you can look at that. But we're gonna get into much greater detail in this playlist and it's gonna be much longer. We're gonna probably work on this for the next six months or so every Friday and really, really become expert in Flask because Flask is a lot of fun. It's a great tool to have. It's great for if you've got to build out a website very quickly, you don't wanna get bogged down in Django. Flask is quick, it's easy, it's lightweight, and it's a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 and you get $30 off memberships so to pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.